Hello and good morning, friends. Today, I want to talk to you about garbage disposals and septic tanks. Can you have them work together? Let's get into it. So I get asked this question quite a bit. And the question involves garbage disposals and septic systems when everybody seems to think that for some reason you can't have a garbage disposal on a septic tank. And I'm gonna tell you why, and also I'm gonna kind of explain a little bit of why people don't want you to have a uh, garbage disposal on a septic tank, right? So septic systems, as we all know, right? The goal of that is to address the solids and the wastewater that comes from the house. So the tank itself, its sole purpose, capture solids. It's just an inert object, doesn't really do anything super crazy, right? The drain fields are what deal with the liquids. So both of these parts work together. Now, a garbage disposal, what everybody uses it for is to clear the drain. Now, generally, you'll also see that some people will put just about everything down there, whether it be potato peels, pasta, lettuce, who knows what it is, but they'll put a bunch of stuff down the drain that ought not be going down the drain. So garbage disposals are far more common on public sewer. And the reason why is let's just say that, you know, you're putting a whole bunch of potato skins and you cause a clog like everybody always says that happens on Thanksgiving and Christmas, etc. Well, once you have that clog, the plumber will come in, he'll push the, uh, the clog all the way down through the sewer pipe and into the main. Well, once that waste reaches the main sewer line in the road, it's no longer your problem. It's now the county's problem. The county will take care of the remainder of the debris because now it's in, the, in their sewer pipe, right? So if we're dealing with a septic system, you don't really have that as an option. So your septic system, everything is on your property and everything is your responsibility. So if you have a, a clog in the sewer line in your kitchen, well, the plumber can still come over, push that clog through the main into the tank, but that debris is still in the tank, right? So you haven't really done anything to address the solids that you've introduced into the system. Now, if you're going to have a garbage disposal, it's very important to limit how many uh, solids you're putting through there. General rule of thumb would be between one and two second blitz is more than enough, just enough to kind of clear that pipe if it starts to have a little bit of water build up inside the sink. And the reason why is garbage disposals will either squish the solids a little bit too fine or a little bit too big. And the issue is that you're gonna run into a lot of additional solids getting into the tank, right? Human bodies do a really, really good job at breaking down the solids, that the stuff that we consume. We break it down very, very uh, efficiently. And so those solids plus the bacteria that comes with it will continue to propagate and basically break down those solids even further while it's in the tank. Well, when you're introducing non-digested food, into the system well there's not that level of bacteria and also that product has not been basically broken down into a digestible form for the bacteria to deal with easily so you run into a problem of additional solids building up inside of the tank right so if you have additional solids building up in the tank now you have to start worrying about your drain fields so what will happen is as those solids build up build up build up if you introduce water into the system which everybody does every time you flush a toilet run a sink bath of you name it the water will actually start to scoop and remove solids from the tank and put it into the drain fields. That additional load of solids is actually what's going to be what causes your drain fields to eventually fail. So what will happen is the solids will get in there and it acts as like a biomat, right? So it's biologic material and it's really sticky and like tar-like. So what it'll do is it'll plug up the soil and the soil's not really, really got anywhere to go or to allow the water to go except for back to the tank. And then that's when you run into the problem of a backup. Now, if you do this long enough, over the course of many years, what will end up happening is you cause the system to prematurely fail. When those drain fields get oversaturated with solids, oversaturated with liquid, it's not really much you can do about it. Now, there are some products out there that people say will help to alleviate that or break up the biomat. There's just not enough evidence or proof that it works. Like for example, in the state of Maryland, if you have a drain field that's failed, if you use those products to kind of break apart the solids, it will not be considered a proper remediation. It's more of just a, a band-aid, right? Maybe in five, 10 years, there'll be enough evidence and enough research done to say that that stuff works. But as of right now, there's not enough information to say that it does anything else beyond just maybe helping a little bit, right? So garbage disposals in some counties in our state will actually force you to pull a permit, believe it or not, right? 
So some counties, you know, they'll make you pull a permit for a deck. They'll make you pull a permit for a water heater. But there's one county in particular that'll make you pull a permit for a garbage disposal. And in that permitting process, they will actually make you go back and do a perk test for your septic system and install additional drainage for your septic system. Wild, I know. So a $200 garbage disposal could end up costing you four or five grand easily, maybe a little bit more, depending on how your soil looks. So the perk test is basically just to, to dig a few holes, see what the soil looks like on the property, see what the drainage looks like, and kind of allocate space on the property to address this the system. Generally, those permits are only good for three or five years. So if you have a house from the 90s who never have a, had a garbage disposal and you want to put a garbage disposal in now, you're going to have to, even though it was done in the 90s, you're going to have to do it again now to make that happen. And then on top of that, they'll make you put an extra drain field and that kind of sucks, right? That's a, a, an expense that nobody really wants or expects to have to pay. Let me know below, have you ever had to have a garbage disposal installed on your house where it involved introducing more drain fields to your septic system? I'm curious. So moving forward, if you have a house on a septic system, you can put a garbage disposal on it, but you need to be very conscious of how much debris you're putting in there. Again, one to two seconds blitz, more than enough, perfectly fine. But if you make it a, a large habit of running it a lot with a lot of debris going through there, you can potentially run into some problems. The other adage for why people always say not to do it is when you have people on public systems, they put just about everything in there, right? Nobody really pays that much attention because again, it, once it gets to the road, it's no longer your problem. Your tax dollars pay for that, right? But on the septic, nobody ever really kind of pays attention to that. So if you're used to growing up in the city water and city sewer and you're doing this all the time and you switch to public or private sewer and you have a garbage disposal, you may not consciously think about that difference between the two. You might end up thinking that you're going to be able to do whatever you want without any kind of consequences. You know, you're going to have consequences. So you have to be conscious of what you're doing. That's not to say that you're maliciously doing it or that you're doing it willingly. A lot of stuff that we as humans do is subconscious. And if you're in the habit, so for 20 years, you've been putting it down the garbage disposal with no issues while you move to private, that unconscious habit will continue and you might run into some problems. Well, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was useful. If you gained some value from this, hit that like button, hit subscribe. Uh, if you've ever experienced any issues with your garbage disposal installation on septic systems, leave a comment below, share your story. It might help somebody else who's going through the same process. I have videos posted every day in the world of well and septic. I look forward to this conversation. Until next time, guys.